I'm going to be hosting you here today. The real good stuff is going to be coming from my friend Dan Stewart. And no, I did not invite Dan on here today with any sort of nepotism in mind. And we have the same name. And even though Dan told me that his uncle is Bob Stewart. Is that right, Dan? That's right. That's right. So he was going to, he was uh, trying to, to grease me up and get, get to, you know, hey, we'd love to have you or love to come <laughs> on Active Rain University and, and share some really cool stuff with your members. Uh, by the way, my, my uncle's name is Bob Stewart. That did not help him get in here. The reason we brought Dan on today is because um, he's, been, he's been working for a little while here in the industry helping you guys and helping a lot of agents around the country connect with their sphere. And it's one of the more important aspects of your business and, and it really can be the foundation for a very strong business. How can you go out there and, and connect with those people that you already know and get them to think of you first when they're thinking about buying and selling real estate or when they have friends who are thinking about buying and selling real estate. So um, I, I have a kind of a, uh, I don't know what it is. I, I like you guys at Happy Grasshopper and one of the reasons for that, Dan, and, and you know this of course, but maybe the folks listening don't is before you guys actually launched your company, in a lot of ways, you kind of did it through Active Rain, in so much as it helped get get Happy Grasshopper off the ground, and it really helped you guys to validate some of the ideas and and take some of these ideas to our members and get some good validation that the stuff that you guys were doing at Happy Grasshopper um, was going to help their business. So, with without too much more smoke for me. I want to make sure everybody knows how to ask a question of Dan as we're going through here today. So you guys all have a GoToWebinar control panel somewhere on your desktop. And as a part of that GoToWebinar control panel, there's a little section in there where you can ask a question of Dan as he gets going here today. In order to make sure everybody knows where that's at, why don't you guys jump over to that, that control panel right now. Why don't you guys share with us where you're joining us from today. Um, Dan and I are on completely opposite sides of the country. I'm in beautiful and sunny Seattle, Washington. Dan, where are you at today? We're in Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida. And he never has to say beautiful and sunny because that is pretty much a given when we're talking about Tampa, Florida. Am I wrong? Yeah, it goes without saying. It goes without saying. Okay, so we got folks. Oh, everybody's checking in here. Awesome. And again, we just have you guys do this. So if you do have a question when when Dan gets going, and he's actually going to pose a few questions to you guys, and we'd love to have the interaction from you guys of being able to jump in there and answer some of those questions that Dan throws out at you. Man, we got folks in every corner, everywhere between Seattle and, and Tampa. Um, wow, awesome. You guys are, are just checking in from everywhere. We appreciate you being here today. With, with that... I'm going to flip it over to Dan. He's the founder of Happy Grasshopper. Happy Grasshopper is a company that helps you connect with your sphere without pestering them. And Dan's going to share with us a little bit today about, about what exactly, Dan? Set the stage for me. Well, thanks, Bob. Uh, you know, first I want to say I really do appreciate your introduction. And I also sincerely appreciate the people in the Active Rain community. Uh, I want to prove it. You know, I want to have a really strong webinar today. I think uh, most people would say some webinars can be pretty bad. Uh, sometimes they're a huge ego fest, right? Or they're like one giant sales pitch from start to finish. Or they're just about the most boring thing you can imagine. So I want this webinar to be different. It won't be boring. And it won't be a sales pitch. I have one primary goal today, and that's to help you see your sphere from a new angle. I want to eliminate confusion and give you a way to make more sales not next year, not after months of trying, not after weeks and weeks of training, but literally right now, today. So does that sound fair? That sounds fair, man. And you know what? I will preface before you even get started and just let everybody know who's on here. These are some of the coolest slides I've ever seen on a webinar. I've been on a lot of these things. <laughs> but these are some really awesome slides, if nothing else. So be, be prepared to be visually stimulated, um, hopefully to the same degree that Dan's going to mentally stimulate us as well. Yeah. We're definitely going to have a good time. Fantastic. And, uh, you, I've told you what we're going to go over, what we're going to cover. Ooh, I missed you there, Just Dan. I'm sorry. I would say, oh, that's all right. Sounds like right. somebody else has their audio on. Yep, I'm killing okay. me. I'm out of here. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> all right. See you, Bob. Um, so, yeah, what I'm trying to say is that I get it. Your time is valuable. If you don't think that there's opportunity for, your in, for you in your sphere, you shouldn't be on this call. So uh, enough said about that. I promise you, if you stay, I am prepared, and you will learn something. So if I say something you really like today, feel free to share it on Twitter. My handle is at DanStewartHG, 
and the hashtag we use is hash happy grasshopper. So um, let's start here. First of all, hi, I'm Dan, and I think it's pretty obvious I take myself very seriously, uh, or maybe not, right? Mostly, I just feel lucky because I've been able to live some of the things I've always dreamed about. I've been able to travel around the US and Canada. I've been able to share the happy grasshopper story with people. And I've been able to meet and build relationships with some truly outstanding folks. Uh, it's been great fun to travel and to, to speak at so many different conferences. Um, but more than anything, what I value are the connections that I've made with real people. So you should know that I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, you should also know that Happy Grasshopper is my seventh company. Um, I kind of feel that I've been more successful in business than anyone with a theater degree should expect to be, uh, but I do feel incredibly grateful. This year, uh, one of my companies has been included in the Inc. 5000 for the fourth year in a row. And what that means is that we've been one of the 5,000 fastest growing companies year after year for the past four years. Now, that's a pretty rare accomplishment. And with the economy we've had over the past three years, it's even harder to do. So I share this with you, not because I want to impress you, but because I really want to impress upon you what's possible when you get really good at building, managing, and nurturing your sphere of influence. I was surprised to learn how much confusion there is in real estate about what a sphere actually is and how critical it is in growing your business. NAR tells you that your sphere is where most of your business comes from, right? I mean, you know this. And most people that I talk to, they say that they know their sphere is important, but they also tell me that they're just not really sure about how to build or manage or really nurture a healthy sphere of influence. So let's take a quick poll. I want to know, how happy are you with your sphere? On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being like incredibly ignorant of what a sphere even is, to 10 being they're sending you more business than you can handle, just put a quick 1 to 10 there in the chat box so I can get an idea where we are. Okay, I, I see some coming in there, and uh, one thing that I've learned about the real estate industry is that you folks love t-shirts. So we're going to be sending t-shirts to a few random people uh, selected from the chat stream. So the more active you are on the call today, the more chance you have to get selected. Um, so good, answers are coming in. My I favorite answer, by the way, was big, was, my favorite answer is big fat zero. <laughs> What's well, not really my favorite answer, but that person stands to earn a lot of insight today, I would hope. <laughs> Definitely. Well, uh, there's one thing that a mentor taught me a few years back, and uh, he said that it's really helpful to look at subjects from multiple different angles. And I, I think one of the big biggest problems people have with their sphere is fully understanding. I think there's a real temptation to say we understand it and that we totally get it, but if we can look at it from a different perspective, we can gain new insights. So here we go. Now this idea, it actually occurred to me several years ago in a martial arts class. Uh, the instructor was trying to do something that had nothing to do with your sphere of influence, right? He was trying to get us to realize what options we had based on our proximity to an opponent. So for this, I need us to take a quick trip over to Bizarro Land. The, uh, the blue skies and the, the butterflies of Happy Grasshopper are gone. And uh, now we've got poor little stick people locked in Mortal Kombat. So I know it's, it's scary, right? Uh, this was a G-rated presentation a moment ago, and now it's PG-13. Hey, Dan, you know what? I, I don't want to – your slide did not advance for me. Uh, really? Really? Yeah, which is crazy because we ran through this all yesterday. Do me a favor, just back your thing out of full screen real quick. Okay. Sorry about the technical difficulties on that. And I'm still just getting first slide. Is that just me? Can anybody else see his slides advancing? Did not see, still have Happy Grasshopper, did not advance on them. Let's just do this real quick. 
Sorry about that. I'm going to pull it back to me for just one second, Dan, and then I'm going to flip it mm -hmm. back to you and see if that does anything there to let's make me. Does everybody want to see my screen for a second? All right, show my screen. You guys can see my tweet deck here for just one second. Hopefully you can see my tweet deck. And then I'm going to flip it back over to Dan. Let's make him the presenter one more time. Let's see if that unfreezes that little giddy up. It's going to ask Dan to show his screen. He's going to do that for us. And hopefully we're going to see something other than that very first slide there. All right. I have selected to show my screen. There we are. Are we there back we in are. action? We're, we're in Bizarro Land. Fantastic. Exactly yeah. where we wanted to be. Take it away. Did that change? Yep, okay. It did. Awesome. Land of confusion. Bizarro Land. So, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Bizarro Land right. once again. <laughs> uh, here we go. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is um, some of the techniques uh, that martial artists use to decide how to defend themselves in different situations. And then I'm going to show you how understanding this can be helpful for us in our world with what we do. So I want you to notice that when the opponents are this close together, they have a lot of different options, right? They can hurt each other in many multiple different ways. They've got all these different things they can do. But look what happens if they're just a little bit further apart. Right? If they spread just a little bit back, their options have been severely limited. So now they can only punch right, and maybe throw a knee or an elbow. Uh, and if they get just a little more space between them, all they can do is kick. Right? So here we've got some people who've moved barely a few feet and they've already eliminated nearly all of their options. And once they're outside of kicking zone, the fight is really over at least temporarily, right? So this is a pretty good example of a way to break down a series of complex options, right? Because you've got all these different things you can do, but by breaking it down in this way, you realize what you can actually do based on your proximity to a target. And instead of target, we can say goal, right? So what if instead of looking at punches and kicks, what if we looked at what you can do to pull people closer to you instead of pushing them away. At the outer edges of our sphere, like if you look all the way to the right side here, you see phone calls and web leads. Uh, when we come in contact with people through a web lead, you know, they really just have like the vaguest idea of who we are at that point. These are uh, web leads and sign calls. They, they want something, but we don't know yet whether we can help them or not. And at the other end of the spectrum, when we've got someone who's really deep in our sphere, when they're very close to us, what we have is a very special relationship where not only would they never consider working with someone else, they'll actually sing your praises and, and send customers your way every chance they get. So again, let me emphasize this. The goal of your sphere of influence is to bring people closer, right? So we'll be taking a look at how to do exactly that very shortly. But first, we've got to consider how people get in our sphere to begin with. And that brings us to our question number two. And I want you to go ahead and get prepared to answer this. I want to know how you get people into your sphere. So, you know, please go ahead and put your answers in the sidebar. I want to know specifically what are you doing to grow your sphere? One thing that's a problem for a lot of people is when they start their business, they, they make a list of all the people they know and then they call that their sphere. And then a year later, well, they still know about the same number of people. And a year after that, it's about the same again. So if you're going to aspire to being super successful, you've got to have a, a strategy in place to grow your sphere. And that starts with just recognizing and establishing what you do to include someone in your sphere. So I want to hear your thoughts on that. And again, I'm promising t-shirts. Uh, our shirts are very nice. You want one. So, um, so good. I see some more stuff coming in there. And uh, I want to call your attention to this top line here, right? We've got web leads, phone calls, floor time, et cetera, et cetera. And we're all familiar with most of those. But I know that some of you are stumped by those letters IRL. And that's short for in real life. So uh, real life believe it or not, is a great place to meet people and add them to your sphere. 
So these are people who you meet while just going about your daily business. It could be your dentist, you know, the parents of your kids' friends, uh, neighbors, relatives, people from church, people you meet at parties. These are all great additions to your sphere if, and this is a really big if, if you know how to engage them in conversation. So this is hugely important. Don't just sign people up for your real estate newsletter. Communicate with them, okay? So now that we've got a framework for understanding how close we are to the people in our sphere, let's take a look at what we do with them once we've got them. And this is a subject I'm constantly amazed how subjective people's experiences are in communicating with their sphere. I promise you, this is like a hot button topic. It's, it's like politics or religion. There are things that you absolutely know that you believe with every fiber of your being that work for you in communicating with your sphere. And there are other people on this call right now who would never even consider those very same things. So let's talk about nurturing your sphere. What do you do to nurture your sphere? How can you actually nurture the people that you consider to be in your sphere of influence? Well, you've got a lot of different options, right? You can connect in all sorts of different ways, uh, even by facts, like you see at the bottom. Okay, that was a joke, not really. Um, well, let's talk then about what you can do to, to pester your sphere. And, you know, big surprise, it's the exact same thing. See, each of these methods, they have their strengths and their weaknesses, and we'll get to that. But for the most part, it's not the way you connect that makes the difference. It's what you say when you do. So here are the two most common mistakes people make when communicating with their sphere. I like to call the first one real estate mouth. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? It's, it's when you always and only talk about real estate. I mean, I just really want to step back and encourage you to slow down. You've got to engage people on a real human level. So just, you know, think about it, right? People who know you, they know what you do for a living. It's okay to not remind us all the time. I promise, if you focus on just becoming a person's friend, they're not going to forget you. So here's the second one, and, and I call this being a taker. Uh, this is when you contact your sphere, but only to ask for referrals. And you probably all know this person, right? It's like trying to withdraw money from a bank account that you haven't made any deposits in. And it, it's really just bad form. So I would say don't do it. Again, it's not about just the way you contact people. It's about what you say when you do. And there are a lot of different options here. So before we go any further, I need to ask you to accept a hard truth about yourself. There's a void between what you intend to do and what you will actually do. Does that make sense? Right? So in between there's unfulfilled potential. I believe that most of you have business waiting for you right now. People who would do business with you today if only they could remember your name. It's true. So many of our customers tell us they've had this experience. Maybe it's someone you met at a party and had a great conversation with and here it is a few months later and they've decided to move and they just can't remember who you are. You see? The thing that you need to do, the thing that's so critical, is to be disciplined. That's the key. You've got to be consistent with contacting your sphere. And folks, I know that you know this, right? I know that you, you already understand that consistency is important. But so many of you tell us that it's really hard to be consistent over time. And I get it. You know, it, it's not that you don't want to be or that you don't intend to be consistent, it's that life will get in your way. So let's uh, get back to all these different options that we've got and how we're going to communicate with our sphere. And Let's pick apart and take a look at a few of the most commonly used options. And let's start with social media. Uh, can I just say I love social media? 
Uh, Facebook has been truly fantastic for me. Uh, it's helped me make friends all over the world. It's helped me connect with customers. It's just, it's been a really great source uh, of community for me. Uh, so I've got a lot of great things to say about Facebook. And if you're not already my Facebook friend, I would encourage you go ahead and friend me. Uh, but also be warned, you know, as great as Facebook can be, there are a few things you really need to guard against. It can be a huge time suck. You know, one minute you just pop on to post something real quick, and then an hour later you've been sucked into the latest hot discussion in one of the many real estate Facebook groups. So by all means, go. There's a lot to learn and much to be had on Facebook. Uh, but just because you don't pay for it every single month, it doesn't mean that it's free. So be aware of those costs. I also want to take a look at newsletters. Now, obviously, uh, newsletters vary widely in both quality and in effectiveness. But let's, let's just face it, you know, most of them, they just don't have any real news in them. We send them out to people and we call them newsletters, but we only call them newsletters because we don't think people will read why I'm so awesome letters, you know? You've got to put stuff into your newsletter that's going to be interesting and engaging with your audience. So doing newsletters well really isn't easy and it does take time, but that's not an entirely bad thing. You know, newsletters really do have their strengths. And one strength is that it's a one-to-many method of communication. You know, sure, you've got to make a time investment. You've got to go through the hard work of writing something. But once you've finished it, once it's complete, a lot of people can read your message. So uh, they've definitely got their place. And now we come to an option that's very near and dear to my heart, and that's email. So, you know, yes, I, I know what you're thinking, uh, but it turns out that email is not dead after all, right? <laughs> In fact, it can be really fun, it can be fresh, it can be social. These are things that we prove to our customers every day, but I want you to know how you can do it yourself. And I'm gonna cover that in detail here in a moment. Um, first, I wanna make sure you understand that email has lots of strengths. Like, it's got this one-to-many efficiency where you can write one message and send it to thousands of people. And you know, typically when you do that, you use templates, right? Uh, and you send that out and everybody knows that they're receiving a message along with thousands of other people. Um, but you can also send an email out with a completely one-to-one -one look. You know? Think of it this way, if I were gonna invite Bob to lunch, even though he's all the way across the country, I wouldn't send him a templated email. I'm not trying to sell him anything. I'm not trying to impress him. I'm just trying to schedule a lunch appointment. So, my suggestion is to make your communication look like you're just trying to communicate with people, not like you're trying to sell them something, okay? Now, I said email has a lot of strengths. Um, it's got this one-to-many efficiency. It's got a one-to-one -one look. Uh, it's also really interesting when you take a look at the difference between the volume of responses you get when you compare social media and Facebook. So let's take a look at this. This is an article from my friend Darren Persinger at Productivity Junkies. Uh, Darren just got married on Friday, by the way, so if you know Darren, be sure to wish him congratulations. Uh, back in April, he wrote this blog post comparing the effectiveness of email marketing and Facebook, and he soundly declared email the winner. Well, I know that might be surprising to some people, so we wanted to really dig in and examine this for ourselves. We wanted to measure the engagement of people rather than just the number of views or number of opens. So we looked at the number of comments made on a Facebook post and we looked at the number of responses or replies that came to an email message. So the Facebook message was commented on by 3% of the tester's friends. So when that same tester sent exactly the same message that they just posted on Facebook, and sent it out via email, 19% of the people responded to it. So that's, that's a startling result. That's much, much better. That's over a 600% increase in the response rate. So, you know, the question is why, right? 
Don't you want to know why it is that people do that? Part of it has to do with Facebook's algorithms. You never know when what you post there is going to be viewed by the people that you're friends with. Um, but another reason gets right back down to a strength that I've already mentioned. When you write an email to look exactly like they're the only people getting it, people really respond, right? That's the power of this one-to-one -one, uh, look with the one-to-one -one efficiency. Email is a really great way to communicate with your sphere. It definitely, definitely is. So um, as good as email is, and as much as it's been a studied thing, and as much as we might think we know everything about email, uh, you need to just recognize that for more than a decade, all the email marketing companies have been teaching exactly the same things to their customers. And you know these things. You know you're supposed to optimize your subject line. You know you're supposed to test your send schedule and time so that you can get the highest number of open rates. Well, there are other things you can still do to make it better. And I'm going to ask you to do them, but I have to warn you, the first thing I'm going to ask, you're going to give me a little resistance on. And I'm going to ask you to stop using those templates. Really think about it. You know, every day, we all delete a whole bunch of email messages without even reading them. And the messages that come to us in template form, sometimes they require us to click on them twice. That means we can just delete it, right? And the other ones just scream, I'm selling something. I'm not personal communication. So they get binned pretty quick too, right? So when you wrap your email in a template, again, you're abandoning all that wonderful stuff you get uh, through that one-to-one -one look advantage that email gives you. Now, um, email results can also be much better if you send consistently. And I know this sounds easy, but I've got to tell you there is magic here. Most people don't do it. They get caught up with their day-to-day -day and they just don't keep in touch like they should. So, you know, you get busy, you're riding that feast, famine, sales roller coaster, right? And I know you know what I'm talking about. And as a result, you only touch your sphere when you're starting to feel really desperate for a sale. And, and that's a bad thing, right? That's when it's so tempting to call and email and ask every single person you know, do you know anybody who's looking to buy or sell their home in the next 90 days? And it's, it's desperate, folks. It sounds desperate because it is desperate. So I'm just going to say it. Find a send schedule that works for you and stick to it, right? Don't abandon your send schedule. It's critical that you consistently touch the people in your sphere. Now for us, for our type of message, this means sending once every three weeks. We've tested this extensively and the three week send cycle yields the highest number of opens and the lowest number of unsubscribes, right? And that brings us finally to the most important thing of all and that's the message, right? I want you to think about the sort of messages that you typically send and compare it to this message that's on your screen now. It's from one of our customers in Canada, Victoria Jacobs. And in the chat uh, box, I want you to just go ahead and answer. Is this a message that you would send? It says, hi, Dan. You probably know already, but Mother's Day is May 8th. Any special plans for mom? In Serbia, children sneak into their mother's bedroom and tie her feet with string. To negotiate her release, mom has to give her children small gifts. Not much in it for mom, but she does get to lie down for a bit. Please let me know if I can do anything for you. Best, Victoria. Now notice that that's a really short message, right? We didn't write a book for her. We just started a conversation with the people in her sphere. Do you think it worked? I'm curious. Do you think a message like that would work? What would you do if you got that message just before Mother's Day, would you have talked about it? Would you have shared it with a friend? Would you have picked up the phone and said, oh my God, did you know what they do for Mother's Day in Serbia? You know what? And every time you did that, you'd remember that Victoria is the one who sent it to you, right? That's a way that you can stay sticky with the people in your databases to stay top of their mind by bringing them interesting things and starting a conversation about it. So. Here's what Victoria had to say about us. Uh, she posted this in a Facebook group called What Should I Spend My Money On? And if you don't know that group, you should. 
it's a place where agents and brokers go to learn about what's actually working and what isn't. And this is what she said. My suggestion and my best find of 2011 was Happy Grasshopper. By far the best open rates, easy to use, and very inexpensive. Support staff is awesome, and my clients are asking when my next email is coming. Can't say enough good about this product. Okay, so that's, I mean, obviously, that's a very awesome thing for her to post for us, and, and we appreciate it. I wanted to share that with you because the number one piece of feedback we get from potential customers is that they're afraid to send these types of messages to their sphere. And I would imagine that some of you have already thought, no, I could never send a message like that. I always need to talk about real estate. When the truth is, you just don't. You can change it up. And you'll find that when you connect with people on a more human level, where you're just asking their opinion about interesting stuff that's happening now, you actually really get to know them, you have a lot more fun, and you don't have to be chasing down new business all the time. So here's another message. This is from a man named Lyndon Moe in New Jersey. And I want you to ask yourself if you'd send this. And of course, I want you to comment on that in the chat bar. So again, notice that and it's just a few short sentences. It says, hi Dan, imagine this. You walk into a bank to cash a check for $100. The teller trips the silent alarm, thinking that you're a bank robber. The cops come, kick you in the head, and arrest you. Is this your worst day ever? And then there's a link to the story. Three years later, the victim was awarded over $3 million. What do you think? Maybe not such a bad day after all. Hope you're well. Let me know if you need anything. Best, Lyndon. All right, so there again, it's a short message. It's followed by a professional email signature. So what do you think? Could this work? Would you send that message? If not, why? Tell us. If you wouldn't send this sort of message, I want to know why. So please make those comments in the chat. Um, now, most people would say that, again, they'd be afraid of how people would respond if you ever comment things uh, outside of the, the scope of real estate. So. Here's what Lyndon had to say about this actual message. And he posted this in a Facebook group called the Frugal Club. Lyndon said, last email goes out, one past client wants to trade up, listing and sale. One sphere wants to buy a foreclosure, both from that last email, plus one for happy grasshopper, right? So how awesome is that? The real secret behind our success at happy grasshopper is that our writers create these messages and control the send cycle. You just have to pick a new message you like best once every three weeks. So we manage the delivery, we report on the send metrics, and you just get to have the conversations. So I've covered quite a lot Dan, here. Dan, can I interject? Can I interject sure. for one second, Dan? Because a, a lot yeah. of the, the, the no's, you asked them to, to say why they wouldn't do it. A lot of them were saying stuff like, that's not my style. Like, that, that particular message that Lyndon sent out seemed like a kind of a down. It, it wasn't very joyous or happy. Um, he, he had a choice of something else to send in place of that. Is that right? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, our users always have at least five choices to choose from. And they also have the ability to edit the messages. So, um, you know, some people have a real feel for how their voice sounds when they write. And if you've been communicating with your sphere for a long time, if they're used to getting messages from you, it really takes you just a moment to find something that fits and then to modify it if you need to. Got it. So um, the, the slide that's up now is the home page of our website. And I wanted to just point this out because you know, today I've talked a lot about the sphere. I haven't talked very much at all, really, about Happy Grasshopper. I'd like to invite you to go to our homepage at happygrasshopper.com and request a free sample message and take a look at that little video there. It's just a quick explanation of what we do, followed by statements from your peers. Uh, and, of course, for those of you who'd like to take a deeper look at Happy Grasshopper, you know, perhaps to use it just personally, or uh, perhaps even for your whole office or your brokerage, um, I would like to go ahead and make myself available for another webinar. Um, so go ahead and put your email address into the chat now, and I will invite you to a deep dive webinar just about Happy Grasshopper. So um, you know, here we come to my summary slide here about 
nurturing versus pestering. And I want to encourage you to connect with the people in your lives. I want you to stop thinking of people as targets and leads and opportunities and focus instead on making friends, right? So how do you do that? You do it by starting conversations. If you remember nothing else, remember that conversation is king. And also, don't forget to get that sample message from our website. <laughs> That's important. So we've saved some time here for your questions. And, of course, I'll be happy to stay around and get them all answered. So Wow, there, there's a ton of them here, Dan. There, there's a really good one that came in, and I think – Gosh, you know, even if I wasn't going to use Happy Grasshopper as a service, you guys mm -hmm. do, you guys have, have tested this, you guys are making changes and little tweaks all the time. Can you talk about what you put in that email signature and, and why some of those components are effective? Can you maybe go back to like Lyndon's um, example sure. there and show us, or, or either one, Victoria or Lyndon, and show us like what, what's in there? Um, it, it looks like you have a consistent theme for both of those people. Just talk a little bit about that signature line. We do. Uh, both of these customers are using the template message that our system creates for them. Uh, but we also do full custom email signatures. So we can make your Happy Grasshopper signature exactly match the email signature you're already using. Uh, but there are a few things here I want to point out. Um, first, if you go up to the top, you know these messages are sent by our servers, but when they arrive in the inbox, they look just like you sent it yourself, and replies go right to you. Okay? And then if we jump down to the email signature and we look at the things that are there, it's all the standard contact information, right? Her name is clear and easy to read. She's got her slogan or tagline in there, uh, her email address, phone number, link to her website, and of course her physical address is also required. Uh, there's an unsubscribe link, and then we have our Need Me Refer Me tool there at the bottom. And what that does is just gives people a one-click way to immediately get in touch or to pass on Victoria's information to someone else. Uh, and then we have these uh, links to Victoria's social media. Now, um, this green text down here at the bottom, I do want to point this out. Our messages go out with absolutely no happy grasshopper branding on them. They're really supposed to look exactly like you sent it yourself. So that's something that, you know, is a dead giveaway when you get email in your inbox and it's, sent by MailChimp or sent by Constant Contact or, or whatever it is that you're using, people automatically know that you're not just communicating with them. Let me ask you this. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Do you, do you guys allow uh, people to take, like, a, like could, could Victoria have taken this piece of content and thrown it up on her social media, thrown it up on Facebook, for instance, to look at what kind of engagement she could get with that message via her other social media channels? Well, she could certainly test that if she chose to. But what she's going to find is exactly what we saw. The response rate um, via posting this on Facebook is going to be so dramatically lower than what you get when you email. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to do that. Now, you did remind me of one question people ask a lot. And you know, I, I do want to comment that the way we send messages from our system, we make absolutely sure that no single recipient ever gets the same message from more than one Happy Grasshopper customer. So what that means, Bob, is that if I'm on your Happy Grasshopper list and on Victoria's and on Linden's, uh, I'm going to get different messages from each of you. Um, so that's, that's something that's really special because, you know, think about that. If you posted this message all over Facebook and thousands of other people were also posting it all over Facebook, um, you know, it, it suddenly becomes much less meaningful <laughs> than a so, personal email that uh, that you receive in your inbox. Right. Do you guys do you guys add in or or have some component of or would you suggest that people doing this on their own outside of Happy Grasshopper <coughs> include like real estate information at some point in you know in the three week cycles? Like, are are you are you always I'm, going to suggest they stay away from that? I am so glad you brought that up. No, absolutely. You should definitely talk about real estate at the right point. Um, you know, think of it this way, right? We know email marketing is an incredibly effective way for, uh, for you to grow your real estate business. Uh, Inman News did this really interesting survey of uh, real estate people earning more than $100,000 a year. And 98% of them say that email marketing is the most effective way to convert someone from a lead to a customer. Uh, and specifically, they called out 
IDX registration and automated follow-up, newsletters, and of course touching your sphere. So you know, let's take a look at that. If if I'm a web lead who's just responded, uh, you know, through your IDX, if you're aware of me from that, you should immediately respond with exactly what they're looking for. And I know most IDX systems are going to be set up to deliver that automatically for you. Now, that person is someone you know is interested in real estate now, and you absolutely want to communicate with them that way. But most of the people that you meet. You know, friends of friends, people you meet at parties, through churches, through your kids, all other social events, they're not necessarily ready for a transaction. And if you're constantly peppering them with real estate, real estate, real estate, you're really training them not to open your messages and not to pay attention to you. Um, so I know it's a long answer there, Bob, but balance is key here. You've got to know what messages are going to be relevant to people. Okay. Do you... There's a bunch of really good questions in here. I, I'll take this opportunity right now before we answer a few more. If if we don't get your guys' question answered and you have a specific question of Dan, I'm going to send you guys over to the Happy Grasshopper Facebook page. So if you just go to facebook.com forward slash happy grasshopper, if we don't get a chance to answer your question or Dan doesn't get a chance to answer your question, go over to the Happy Grasshopper Facebook page, throw your question up there. I kind of committed Dan to answering those sometime in the next sometime today or hopefully you'll have some time to do that or um, Celeste can hop in there and, and yeah, help answer some of the it. questions that are that are real specific to kind of you know some there's there's something here like do you guys allow um, like targeting or, or can you segment a list that you have inside of Happy Grasshopper you want to take that one do you guys that's a great question Bob thanks for bringing that one up um, one of the things that we've learned about email marketing over the years and I didn't mention this but I used to own a CRM company and we had an email marketing tool that was baked right into our service and we just we allowed people to slice and dice their database in a hundred different ways and here's what happened it, it created a sense of paralysis for people because they would get so many different buckets that they would just uh, not know how to communicate with each of those buckets and part of the beauty of happy grasshopper is its simplicity uh, with our service, you don't have to worry about whether or not someone is in phase A, B, C, D, or E of the real estate transaction. It's never going to trip you up. You can send this to absolutely everybody, all your current customers, all your past customers, everybody in your sphere without having to worry about slicing and dicing. So, you know, I sure. want to be clear here, Bob, there is value in slicing and dicing, but that's not uh, the problem we're trying to solve with Happy Grasshopper. Sure. Shannon asked maybe the best question I've seen come across of, of a bunch of really good questions. She said, give us some advice or, or some suggestions about how do you, like let's say I'm, I'm, I'm at a party, I'm, I'm talking to somebody, that they're, I'm just having a good conversation with them. How do I get their email address? Like what, how do you suggest going about that? <laughs> or is it like, you know, you, you, hey, do you have a business card, trade business cards? I know when you're in a, when you're in a professional environment, that, that would be the, more, the most common way to do it. But when you're at, a, you're at a cocktail party, like how would you go about kind of bridging that? Bridging yeah, that? That's, that's really interesting. One bit of feedback that I love to get from our customers is that they find the messages we write not only give them like a way to communicate via email, but they also give them lots of interesting stuff to talk about. So when they're at parties, they can you know, bring up this idea of, did you know this about Mother's Day? Oh, let me send you the story on it. What's your email address? You know, there, there's lots of ways you can do that. And I know that's like earth shattering, right? You're actually going to ask them for it. <laughs> we, we don't have a magic wand that will suck their email addresses out. But uh, the point is that you want to add people to your sphere who are actually going to remember who you are. Um, you know, you shouldn't just like buy a list of names and email addresses and start to go about it that way. You should get out and about and really engage with people. So, so I mean, so what I hear you say then is if you always have something interesting to say, it's not real tough to get somebody's email address and, and let them know that you'd love to share something with them. Or That's right. Yeah, that's one of the interesting things that we didn't think of on our own, but, you know, First one person tells us, then a few people tell us, and so we've come to just agree with the fact that um, part of the benefit of our service is giving people interesting things to chat about. 
So Elise, Elise says, how would people unsubscribe from this? You guys have the little unsubscribe link at the bottom of all email, just like any good email provider has. I think otherwise you just end up We absolutely do, so. and it's, I've got it a little covered there with Victoria's thing, but you can see here on Lyndon's email, to unsubscribe, click here. Right. So Bob asks, here's a, this is a really good question, because you, we, we started out looking at kind of um, – you know this this line that you had, and on the right you had a web lead, which was kind of the furthest away from being somebody that's really in your sphere. Bob asks, is this something that you would send to a lead that you haven't really converted to a true contact yet? Uh, I like to say no to that, and I'm saying that with the caveat that some of our customers do. Um, it's really interesting, you know. What we view our role as is to give you interesting things to talk about and uh, sort of a painless way to put that information out there. Um, I really strongly would suggest that you have a conversation with someone. You know, when you get that web lead and you pick up the phone to answer their questions or you reply via email, you know, make the effort to, to make an actual connection there instead of just a, a sales call. And then when that person receives your happy grasshopper message, it's not going to seem kind of out of the blue or, or unexpected. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so I mean, we could keep answering. I'll tell you what. Here's what we're going to do, you guys. If you have a question still for Dan, go over to that Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash happy grasshopper. Um, if you want, he, he had, he, if you go to the front of happygrasshopper.com, you guys can grab kind of a, a sample of what these these things look like. A bunch of you guys left your email address in here, and I believe that was because Dan was going to invite you to the next webinar yes. that he has. So I, I will make sure that he gets all of these email addresses of you guys that were that left here so that we can have you come back and, and join us for for a little bit deeper dive into, what was it? Nature versus nurture? Well, I'm, <laughs> was that what your next one was? was nurture versus pester, but no, Bob, uh, the follow-up <laughs> The, yeah. the follow-up webinar is going to be all about specifically happy grasshopper. So Got we'll it. dive in. We'll show people how to actually use the service and get their, their contacts loaded. And we'll also show you case studies of the sort of results users are getting and what you should expect from using our service. Cool. Okay. So that's what those emails you guys were giving me were for. I'm gonna, I'll make sure Dan gets his hands on those so that he can invite you guys to, to take a little bit closer look at happy grasshopper. Hey, Dan, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. I, I picked up a few good things. I tweeted out some of the stuff that Dan said. 